Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. AI, or artificial intelligence, it's, it's everywhere today. It's in our homes, it's in our offices, and it's in our cars. It's given us Siri, it's given us Alexa, and Netflix. And in Netflix? Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> but what can this machine learning technology tell us about our health? Let's find out. Joining us in studio are two Mayo Clinic cardiologists, that's heart specialists, Dr. Paul Friedman and Dr. Siraj Kappa. Welcome to the program, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is good to have both of you because this is pretty exciting stuff. We for sure want to know how it is that you can tell someone's physiological age by doing an EKG. So the concept that age and other features of who somebody is or characterize an electrocardiogram has actually been known for quite some time. The truth is we know that the electrocardiogram can act as a sort of biometric, almost like a fingerprint of an individual or, or like a retinal scan. The problem is to the common eye of a clinician who's even an expert in reading electrocardiograms, identifying these very subtle features to differentiate person A from person B, or person A when they're younger versus when they're older are very difficult. So since the 1950s, we've really known that people's electrocardiograms change as they age in predictable ways. But again, for an individual such as ourselves to simply look at it and say, oh, this person's now aged 20 years, is extraordinarily difficult. So tell us for what what you mean really by physiological age, how worn out the body is. Is that basically what it is? It's essentially the question of when a doctor sees you and says you're older than stated age or you appear your stated age or younger than your stated age, it speaks to how healthy you are overall. It's the overall sense of wellness that exists in terms of how your body's functioning. You have a smoker who looks older than stated age physiologically, their body has aged, they've had cellular aging and other factors that might make them more at risk of having other issues or dying sooner. So you and, can, oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, please go ahead. Uh, so you can look at someone's EKG and say, by looking just at this data, not at a patient, this looks like a 75 year old man. Exactly. And so how do you use that information, Dr. Friedman? Well, that's a great question and one that, that um, we're still working on understanding, but, but there are a couple of ways. First, um, when someone comes to you, if you get uh, an ECGH, and let's say they're older. You said ECGH? Age. Age. Okay. Age, ECGH. yeah, so physiologic age. Um, what we know is that when we've looked at the charts of people where there's a mismatch between their ECG age is determined by AI and their actual age, if their ECG age is older, they tend to have mo more comorbidities, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, those kinds of things, or heart attacks. Also, there's some emerging evidence to suggest over the long term, they won't do as well, higher risk of dying. So, I mean, it's an important difference. In other words, some people age at different rates than other people, and we've seen this, right? We've all seen the 60-year-old who looks like he or she is 90, and the 90-year-old who looks like a 60-year-old. And the question is, can we get our hands on that? And you might say, well, what do you do with it? So first, when someone comes and there's a mismatch, you do a good health screening. Make sure that the current evidence we have is applied. Is your blood pressure well controlled? Is your blood sugar well controlled? Uh, how is your cholesterol? Those kinds of things. Second area where that could be important would be um, if we find diseases, we've seen that treating diseases that are present can actually make people get younger. So we've seen, at first on some of these, we thought, oh, there must be a problem with the algorithm. <laughs> and in one very dramatic example, there's a, a man who at age 30, his ECG age is in his 50s. By the time he's 50, he's in his late 70s. And then something stunning happened. His clock turned to age 54 and his ECG er, dropped to like from 78 down to the 40s. And you're saying, what happened? Yeah, what did he do? He got a heart transplant. <laughs> he actually, he literally got the heart of a 16 year old and became younger physiologically and then started losing weight, became more active, lost high blood pressure, lost diabetes and continued to get younger even as time went forward. So there are, so if we find conditions, we can treat them. We can treat risk factors. And the last thing that I think is really interesting is as you know, there are a number of efforts to try to develop anti-aging drugs or treatments, right? How do you know if they work? 
<laughs> are you going to just treat a number of people and wait for them to die? Well, there's even websites where you can order that uh, yeah. stuff online. Well, right, right. right. Yeah. But wouldn't it be helpful to get some sense of someone's physiologic age without waiting to see what it means, you know, the number of years for uh, how long they live after that? Now, is this information available now? If, if I had an a EKG at the Mayo Clinic today, would you tell me what my physiologic age is? The short answer is yes, but. And the yes is it is available. The but is it's only as part of a soft launch. We are internally using it and have an infrastructure set up where uh, to better understand it clinically with these AI tools, we're doing a number of prospective trials. But we also, some of these are used as part of research trials, but some are being used in a limited subset of cardiologists who are trying to put this in the big picture. And uh, it's creating a, a whole new sort of consult, what I'll call an AI consult, where if you think about it conceptually, instead of having survivors of diseases, as these tools get better, we will have previvors, people who know they're at risk for certain diseases or conditions. I would think that, uh, you know, someone looks at their watch all day long because they're trying to get their step count in or they're competitive with themselves trying to always get that step count in. If you can show them what their age is, their physiological age, they might be inclined to try to lower that age. I mean, that's absolutely true. The fact is, if you can give people an idea that you're not quite as well as you might want to be, but give them the empowerment to actually make those changes and even track those changes, that's a huge opportunity. I mean, the reality is, and we talk about this all the time, that the vast majority of the population are not patients. The reality is about 50% of the population never see a doctor between the time they're born and the time they die. So, really? Yep. 50% of people never see a doctor in the United States? Actually, worldwide. In the okay. U.S., though, um, it's interesting because the number of times individual people see a doctor per year is far less than in the rest of the developing world. Mm. And we're working on various form factors where we can deploy these AI algorithms also via wearables. So we can potentially empower individuals in the community to use these in order to identify, hey, I might have something more going on. We can come see somebody to understand, is there something lurking underneath my otherwise good exterior to tell me that maybe I'm getting diabetes, maybe I need to make some lifestyle changes. So that empowerment of the consumer to engage with their information is part of where this is going. So you think there will be a wearable that will tell you basically what your physiologic age is, and if it's different than your chronological age, your actual age, then you ought to go see the doctor. That is actually our long-term hope, and that's what we're working towards. Pretty incredible. It's exciting. Well, if your physiological age isn't the same as your chronological age, that is, if your body is older than you are, then it <laughs> may be that if there's an underlying health problem and you should see someone. Absolutely. And if the problem is identified and treated, doctors may be able to turn back your physiological clock. Pretty incredible. The technology, it's on the way. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic Heart Specialist, Dr. Paul Friedman and Siraj Kappa. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you both. Thanks.